Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, and if you're new to my channel, hello, my name is Gabby, and welcome to my strange little YouTube channel. Now, today's video is super unplanned, so if you are new to my channel, I promise that I'm usually more prepared for my videos than this, but I just came about this news about two days ago, and I just decided to do a video on it yesterday, so there wasn't a ton of planning with this video. There was a huge break in a popular Jane Doe case, and it is probably the doe case that I have always been most attracted to, like most intrigued by and done the most research on. So when I first saw the news article pop up that they found out who this Jane Doe was, I like freaked out and messaged everybody I know and this case I was actually going to do a video on in general and then they found out who she was and it's of course very bittersweet because they found out who she was but of course now they have to try and look into who took her life or how she did die so it's one hand very exciting but on the other hand we're still not done we just we still don't have all our answers with that being said let's just get into the video on April 24th, 1981, the body of a young woman was found in Troy, Miami County, Ohio, in a ditch alongside Greenlee Road in Newton Township. A passerby noticed her poncho and then went to get a better look and realized that there was in fact a dead body lying in this ditch, and the police were notified not long after. She was in fetal position wearing Wrangler jeans, a patterned brown and orange turtleneck shirt, a white bra, and a deerskin poncho with purple stitching in it. Because of this deerskin poncho, that is why she was nicknamed Buckskin Doe. She was also found with no shoes or socks on. She had not been deceased long when they discovered her body, so they were able to get fingerprints. She had only been dead about a couple of days, if that. Um, they ran tests on her body and discovered that her cause of death was blunt force trauma to the head. She had also been strangled, but that wasn't her cause of death. Many people have come to the conclusion that she was probably strangled, and then the person realized that it wasn't killing her, so they hit her over the head with some sort of an instrument. As for her physical description, she had natural reddish brown hair that was tied in two pigtails with blue rubber bands tied around the ends. Her eyes were light brown and she had tons of freckles. She also had a very pointy nose as they described it, which was a very prominent feature of hers. They thought at first that she possibly could have been a victim of an unknown serial killer at the time in that area whose Victims were primarily prostitutes, but after running tests on her body, they discovered that there was no signs of sexual assault. Then they thought that she possibly ran away from home, that she lived kind of a hippie lifestyle and traveled around a lot, living out of a bag, but she had like immaculate hygiene. Her hair looked like it had been trimmed recently, her nails were cut, her legs were shaved, her teeth were brushed, her hair was brushed. I mean, she definitely didn't look like she was living on the road for very long. Her height was about 5'4 to 5'6 and she weighed about 125 to 130 pounds. In April of 1981, a sketch of her was released onto local news stations and 200 leads were followed and they went absolutely nowhere. There was tons of media attention to this case all over and this case really went nowhere. She was eventually buried in Riverside Cemetery in Troy, Ohio. In 2008, her DNA was entered into the National Missing and Unidentified Persons System and 226 missing women and girls were ruled out as being buckskin doe. Many people through the years, including myself, believe that she was possibly just a wanderer and she met the wrong person. They figured that the reason that this case went cold for so long is because she was possibly from a different area. Now because of that, they did isotope testing on her body. If you don't know what that is, um, if you're in a certain area for a certain amount of time, you will ingest and inhale different chemical elements in that area so they can test those chemical elements and figure out where you had been lately 
before your passing. They ran these tests and they came to the conclusion that she spent some time a couple months in Fort Worth, Texas and Southern Oklahoma. In 2016, the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children released a new facial image of Buckskin Girl, which was then distributed to the media, but no one who recognized her came forward claiming they knew the girl. Most Jane and John Doe cases just have a reconstructed photo of them that's done on the computer but with this case there was actual photos of her dead body and still with that no one came forward saying that they recognized her. They ended up taking her DNA from an almost 37 year old blood sample and running it through a public genealogy database and they found a relative. For almost 37 years this girl was known as Buckskin Doe, and on April 11th, 2018, it was released to the public her true identity. Her real name is Marsha Lenore King, and she was born June 9th, 1959. She was 21 years old at the time of her death and was from Little Rock, Arkansas. An organization called the DNA Doe Project uses genealogy tools similar to those used by companies like Ancestry and 23andMe to identify Jane and John they accepted Buckskin Girl's case and made the match. Well, I think the biggest lesson was really persistence <clears throat> because yeah. a year, three months ago when we started talking about it, everyone said it couldn't be done. Yeah. We'd look at each other and say, why, why not? not? Persistence paid off. After the news conference, Dr. Murray got into NamUs, the database of America's unidentified dead to change the Buckskin Girl status to identified. Her family strangely never reported her missing, but I'm guessing that they just figured she was a runaway and it was her choice not to come home. But her mother said that in the almost 37 years since she left home, that she never moved homes or changed telephone numbers just in the hopes that her daughter would call or someday decide to come home. Now, of course, all this news is still very fresh to the public and very fresh to the family and especially her mother. Because of that, her mother is still going through a grieving process, most likely, and hasn't come out with much more information regarding her daughter. She was hopeful that one day her daughter would return. So, um... We've given her answers, but it's not necessarily the answer she wanted. We don't really know the entire story behind Marsha and if she decided to leave home on her own or if she just went somewhere one day and was kidnapped. We really don't know the entire backstory yet. I'm sure that will come out to the public eventually. As for now, the people working on this case are extremely happy that there was this huge break in the case and that they discovered who this young girl was after almost 37 years but of course like i stated before it's very bittersweet because now they're on the hunt for a murderer the wikipedia page dedicated to this case was changed from buckskin girl to the murder of marcia king but for now, at least her headstone is changed from Jane Doe to her actual name. Definitely let me know down below in the comments what your theories are and your thoughts about this case are. I love conversing with you guys down below in the comments. My heart seriously goes out to her family. I hope and pray that this case can be completely solved and that the person who is responsible can face full repercussions for their actions. I can't even fathom having hope for almost 37 years that your daughter will come back home and then getting news like this. Let me know if you want me to do more identified doe cases on my channel. I would love to. I feel like it gives a little bit of hope for the cases about unidentified men and women. I love you guys so much and we'll see you guys in my next video. Bye guys.